21. Calculate the delta S notch for the following changes. And then we have the balanced equation. We have zinc solid plus CuSO4 solid yields Cu solid plus ZnSO4 solid. Okay. So what is the delta S notch? Well, delta S, right, that triangle means change. And we're looking for the change in the entropy. Entropy, randomness, disorder of molecules, oh boy. Um, chaos of what's going on in the system. We're trying to find out that change. And this notch means that we're taking it into consideration, the standard values. And the standard values are always going to be in the back of a textbook. So that's what I did for you guys. I went to the back of the textbook to find out what these standard values are. So for zinc solid, I have an S value of 41.6. CuSO4 is 109.2. Copper by itself is 33.15. And the ZnSO4 is 110.5. Now, generally, we can get an over, you know, an, an idea of whether the delta S value is going to be overall positive or negative. But in this case, since I literally have all solids and I only have one each, I have no idea whether this delta S is going to be a positive or a negative. So it'd be the best to just figure out the number. But now, what are we going to do with these numbers? Well, here comes the formula of this. Your overall delta S of the whole reaction, Rx and its reaction, is always the sum that's that little Greek symbol, the sum, AKA adding everything up, the sum of all your products minus the sum of all your reactants. But now, are these numbers gonna be the same or are they gonna be different? Well, this goes by your coefficients. But in this balanced equation, since every coefficient, there's a one in front of it, technically, these numbers are all going to be the same. In essence, you always take the value that's in the back of the textbook and you times it by the coefficient. But they're all one. So anytime that you multiply by one, it's just the same number. But I'm just showing you here just so that you kind of get the idea of what to do. If there was a two in front of a compound, you would times it by two. Now, we're talking about the sum and literally there's plus signs for both the reactants and the products. So I have to add these values together to get one whole big number for the reactants and one whole big number for the products. So let's see what we get. 41.6 plus 109.2 is 150.8. So that's the total sum for the reactants. 33.15 plus 110.5, 110.5. The whole is 140, whoop, that should be in red. We'd love to color code here. 143.65. And now here are your two values that are gonna be used now for our balanced equation. So we have a delta S for the whole entire reaction products minus reactants. So the product was 143.65, and I'm just gonna subtract that with the 150.8. And look how close the number is gonna be. It's gonna be negative, but we could not guesstimate that from the get-go, you know, from the beginning. So 143.65 minus 150.8, and I get a negative 7.2, because if we do include significant figures, there's only one after the decimal here, so I have to cap it at one, so it'd be 7.2. That's very, very, very close to zero, and it kind of makes sense. I mean, you have just one solid a piece, so a total of two solids on the left, two solids on the right, so there really is very, very little change. That's why this number is very, very close to zero. And this unit would be joules, per mole times Kelvin, it's the same unit as what is in the appendix values. And that is it. So the change in entropy for this is just a negative 7.2 joules per mole times Kelvin. All right, what do you think? Hopefully this helped you out. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you wanna help us out. Tell your friends, tell your classmates about this cool YouTube channel. Just wanna get the word out there that this 
cool, free educational services exist. We also get physics and math videos on the channel. So go check it out. Okay. Bye-bye.